Hey guys, welcome to Abnormal Outdoors again today. And today we're talking knife reviews. Hey guys, Dan Lust, Abnormal Outdoors again here, man. Coming to you from the testing facility. <laughs> uh, get, we're gonna get back into knife reviews a little bit, man. Uh, kind of crazy. Uh, it's hard to say this, but uh, I'm gonna review uh, the Buck 110. Believe it or not, I've never owned one of these knives. I've always wanted one. Never could acquire one in my youth. Here we go, man. That's where it comes, the leather sheath. Uh, be honest with you, uh, you know, kind of lost favor. and We changed knives like crazy. My wife found this on sale at Walmart. Uh, I think I got about $42 in it. You can see that there. Uh, these are the ones that were tough to acquire when I was a kid. Uh, I, can re I can remember these and wanting these and, and I had to settle for charade. Uh, they were kind of like the knockoffs on that. And I always wanted one of these and I've never had purchased one, never traded one for one. So this is my first one. This is actually a new one from Walmart. Uh, I started looking up the specs on this thing just to see what's going on. We can talk about it. It's uh, the length is 3.75 inches. Overall open length is 8.75. Close is 4.8. Weight is 7.2 ounces. And uh, here's the big one for me, the steel, the 420 steel. Now guys, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that. And I can remember when I was a kid that when this knife come out, uh, it, it was out for a long time when I started accessing it. 77, 78, 79, 80. They used to, Buck used to put on their logo was a nail and the knife and a hammer hit. Now, I talked to a good friend of mine just the other day and we were rem reminiscing about this knife. And he goes, that was the problem with the Bucks. That they were so hard, if you ever let them get dull, they were very hard to sharpen. And you know that, that rung a bell with me. Even the charade was like that. They made them so hard they were razor blades, they lasted good, but when they, if you used them way too dull, they were a, a pain to get back. And I know over the years they've changed steel several times. Uh, me, as far as a, uh, uh, on this knife, it's like I said, it's 420 stainless steel, or it's 420 HC, high carbon. And I'm telling you, that's one of my favorite steels. It sharpens good, it lasts pretty good, it's easy sharpening the feel. So let me adjust the camera down. We'll get it down here on the tabletop. Let's get you guys a good, good look at this. Hang on one second. Okay, guys, we've got you down here on tabletop review here. You can see the nice. I'm going to try to get you close in on it. Let that focus in. This is called four pins. They're actually, on this, they protrude a little bit. You can feel them. I went over this knife pretty good. The fit finish is really good on this knife. You can see it's, it's brand new, it's stiff. I haven't done nothing this knife except uh, run a strop on it. You, can, you, know, you guys can see the fit and finish. I mean, it's fingerprinted up, that brass is gonna do that. Like I said, a lot of guys don't like these knives because of the hollow grind. And it's, it's a hollow grind with a sec secondary bevel. And there's some stories behind this knife. Uh, is this your favorite bushcraft knife? Absolutely not. It wasn't never intended for a bushcraft knife. But there's a lot of woodsmen run this knife when I was a kid. They, you know, we didn't get into batoning and stuff like that with knives. We were taught that our edges were, you know, very, very, uh, very particular with our edges. We wasn't going to abuse the knife at all. Uh, we made pot hangers and stuff like that, but mostly because we were out there, like I said in past videos, you know, I was a fisher, fisherman, a hunter, and a trapper. Uh, we wasn't really, you know, building super shell or building shelters and stuff like that. You know, we were out there doing that. We did take a tarpless camp, but mainly for skinning and food prep. And because saber grinds the way they are, and with a secondary bevel, they can be a little bit more fragile you know, when you're beating them. You know, probably the toughest 
two of the toughest uh, grinds you put on a knife is a Scandi and a Convex because it, it doesn't thin the blade down real far. This blade is, for the thickness of this blade, you guys can see it, and look how thin that blade is. I mean, it's really cut down, and it makes it, I hate to say fragile because this knife's tough, but you understand it makes it less durable. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the sheet that comes along with this thing, I was kind of a little disappointed. There's a lot of leather guys here in the U.S. that says uh, made in Mexico right there. I mean, come on, Buck. You know, we can spend a few more dollars on the sheath. But really, the leather's not in bad shape. Uh, it actually feels pretty good. Uh, the stitching looks good. The riveting looks good on it. I mean, you can't complain except for uh, sheath made in Mexico, right? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me get you in frame right there. So... What, what, I, what don't I like? Well, let's go, let's keep going what I like. I, I love the wood, the, the brass handles. I mean, like I said, the fit and finish is almost perfect. The lock. This is the lock to put on all knives. This is the lock that God intended you to put on there. <laughs> Liner locks suck. They're dangerous. I don't like them. This thing has such a positive lock up, it's crazy. It is back. I've seen these on YouTube, guys just beat this knife to death to make it fail, fail, you know, and to break this piece. This would be the weak link on any folder, is right here, you know, at the joint. Anytime you've got two pieces, is a weak link. But because they've got such a positive lockup, this knife, if you did had to get in a fight with a critter and your life depended on it, you know, it's not going to fold over on your fingers in a stabbing motion. I mean, a lot of times, you know, we're skinning, and, you know, I talk the grip all the time. I always talk the grip. Now, I've got a very large hand. I'm a very per, per, big person. This is pretty skinny right here for me, okay? But it, it'll work. I, believe it or not, I borrowed my buddy's knife and did uh, several deer with his knife. Uh, he has a Buck 110 automatic. It's got a button on the side. Automatic knife. And I wanted to try it, and I did. And it, it works just fine. Uh, the buck is rolled over. I'm trying to get, keep guys in frame. You can see this curve right here. It doesn't lend well with like your gutting task on your grip. There's a big pocket right here. And it and this point goes into my palm of my hand. Now that's based on other people's hands, you know, smaller and everything. But I'm giving you my opinion on the knife. And so you can kind of see that pocket. I like to have that molded in the hand, but I still got the curve with my finger, you know, to, to get underneath the hide and to push. You know, it still gives me a thumb push to shove in with a knife. And if I did hit a bone, I was going pretty fast or hit it in the rib cage, I'm not worried about the knife folding back on me because of the positive lock system. I mean, when Buck invented this knife, I mean, he put a lot of thought into this because this thing is just rugged. It's hard to push, especially it's new. Uh, you know, but man, I just, I'm loving this knife. And, and guys, really, it's still clean. I haven't tested this knife. I really don't feel like I, I have to test this knife. I know that sounds funny. Uh, hopefully I'll be out deer hunting and we'll do some skinning with this knife uh, and show you how it skins. But I pretty much know what it's gonna do uh, even though this one's new. Uh, and guys, I switched so many knives, it's crazy that I physically have to uh, take my other knives off and just carry a knife. Uh, I've been doing that with the Kukri, testing the Kukri on that. So, uh, would, is this knife worth $42? Absolutely it is, if you can get it. I got it at Walmart. My wife gets a discount because she works there. Uh, I've seen them as high price as $100 online, you know, on Amazon and knife forms. Is it a $100 knife? Uh, the quality and the fit and finish, 420 H HC steel, yeah, it is. It's a $100 knife. I, I wouldn't feel bad if I paid $100 for this knife. I just, uh, I've already, see, I already dinged up the, the brass. The brass is soft. It's going to get dinged and tarnished. Uh, so do, do I like this knife? I absolutely do like this knife. I think it's, especially for $42. I bought this knife myself. You know, I'm not sponsored by nobody on that. Fits in the sheath really good, really tight. 
It's got the right sewed in loop. If you ever see these loops that are sewed like this on both sides, it'll fail. You need this loop in there. It takes the stress off that top one. In fact, that's how I lost my second charade was because both ends of the sheath was sewed on. And then the top one pulls on them stitching. When you put a loop in it like this, it has a tendency you know, to really pull on the stitching this way. A lot better design. I mean, it's a standard true and true, true blue sign. I know it's a pretty basic video, guys. The Buck 110 is just, to me, uh, uh, it's the old standby classic. Uh, you know, where do I score this knife between 1 and 10? Uh, boy, that's, that's a tough one because the fit and finish is good, the positive lock, the steel's good. Uh, this knife here, like I said, it's going to be hard to see. But, you know, I put the edge on this knife, and I mean it just, I don't think, you can see it. I just touched it. No pressure, just touch it. And you know you got you, you know you got a sharp knife when you can do one. You try to find one hair and pluck it off. Of See that one hair? Well, there's probably three there. Oh, 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 get you in frame, but it's hard to see. But that's how razor this knife is. This knife is a skin and full. Now, with that said, I don't really prefer the clip points. You know, is there is there the perfect ten knife out there for me? <laughs> that don't exist. It's like looking for the Holy Grail. Uh, I got, but I've never been a fan of clip points, and I, I really don't know why. I, I just, uh, I just never liked them. They, they lend to skinning, but because of this, this little outward curve, it actually not just straight. You know, if this was straight, it would make a better skinner. Because that's down a little bit, it has a tendency to dig in a little deeper in the meat while you're trying to, you know, go like that. Which, you know, as long as you're not hurting the skin. You cut a couple cuts and the meat ain't bad, but that that's probably a negative for me on the Buck 110, and that's because it's a clip point. But you can see, kind of line it up with my hands and fingers, is when I'm digging in, I, I've got to raise up. Once I get it, it's it's wanting to force the knife into the meat because of that clip point. Is that a deal breaker? <laughs> Absolutely not. I can do this. Remember, guys, these are just my point of views, and uh, you know, because I trapped and skinning stuff all my life. Uh, you know, Utsi did it with a, with a stone, and it can be done with anything. But I explained to you before, knives are tools, and we, we take tools, uh, you know, screwdrivers and Phillips head screwdriver and flathead screwdriver. They're both screwdrivers, but they're both different tools. So, you know, they both have their good and bad points. Uh, this knife, if you're looking for a good, uh, I hate to say it's in the bushcraft category, but it can be, it can be done, but it really was not designed for that. But what's nice about that, carrying a sheath knife around, you know, people, uh, you know, you walk around with a sheath knife on your side. I'm here in Ohio, we have no law, knife laws, but you still get them looks and stares because of, this is a large knife. You know, we're talking, you know, uh, almost nine inches long, but it, it disappears and becomes not as menacing, I guess. You know, it's folded up just like my multi tool, you know, so you can get around a lot easier, you know, with a folder around town. You know, it's not, a, this is not a tactical, quick out of the pocket blade clip point. Don't really agree with, you know, that kind of style of knife. Uh, but the 110, <laughs> what can I say bad about it? You know, my, this a lot of this, the grip, the clip point, that's all personal preference. Uh, this knife's been around a long time. I mean, it's it's true blue. It still has sales on this knife. Buck still produces this knife and warranties it forever. So, I mean, is it, <laughs> what am I going to say? Uh, I think it's got its point, guys. I think if you're looking for a good folding knife, I think this is right up into the ballpark of a great folder, probably one of the best because of the lock system on it. Uh, a lot of people will say the 420HC is not hard enough for them. Uh, I believe it is. I mean, I could probably do uh, uh, maybe a whole deer, you know, without touching it up. I have other 420HCs. I've never done this buck, so it's going to be hard to say, but the way she sharpened up, I mean, she come, 
she would shave hair out of the box. But you guys know me, man. It's got to be stupid, scary, sharp. And if you guys see what I'm doing right here, I can feel my fingerprints. There's ridges on top of my fingerprints. That's how sharp this knife really is. Uh, that's what it lends to a good meat processor. It lends to a good skinner. Uh, is it a batoner? Absolutely not. I mean, you don't, there's ways around batoner. I mean, but is it a bushcraft knife? Man, I can cut seven notches with this thing. I can cut, you know, all my dingle sticks and, you know, doing my camp chores, man. Well, what's the old saying? Uh, man, Mike Denny was cracking up laughing. He said, yeah, I use my bushcraft knife. It opens my MREs. Yeah. <laughs> in my uh, mountain house, you know? And so uh, does it lend itself good for that? Absolutely. So uh, one through 10, where, where would I rank this knife? Man, the history behind it, uh, the quality involved, th this knife's gonna rate probably in the, in the squatchy zone of, I'd say about an eight. Man, that's a high number, one out of 10. I mean, the handle's skinny for me. Like I said, if you're a smaller stature guy or a lady, you know, this will work better for you. Uh, I don't like the clip point. Uh, that's two negatives on the knife, but both them negatives are personal preference. There's nothing, there's not a flaw in the knife. It's just different styles. So I, for nostalgia and for being long lasting, yeah, absolutely it's a 10. You know, it's been around. It's a classic. Uh, but with them two negatives on me for skinning, what I, what my method I use a knife for, uh, that's the two negatives I have for it. Uh, other than that, that thing, I mean, you look at the fit and finish on this thing. It, The stamping's still crisp and clear. They didn't get cheap on that. You know, you can barely feel between the wood and the brass, uh, you know, the fit and finish. This here's been polished down perfect. I mean, the the... the back end of it's perfect. You can barely, barely feel that. I mean, just barely. Uh, so guys, I know it sounds funny, man. My first 110, that's hard to believe. Uh, 56 years and I, I've never acquired a buck 110. That's hard to believe, but there's my first one, guys. Um, hopefully this fall we'll get, it, we'll get it on some video on some deer, working it. All right, guys, get the camera flipped back around. Hope you enjoyed this video of my opinion on the buck 110 guys guys if you want to see more of these man you got to please like and share and subscribe uh these knives cost me money uh, which all knives do if you want to uh donate to my paypal uh you can go in there on the friends and family it's under uh, abnormal outdoors at paypal uh that would help the channel and help purchase these knives but remember to like share and subscribe Mash that daggone bell for you. That way we're back up and running knife reviews. Uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this, but we got more to do. Stay tuned, man. Stay tuned with the channel. I got a lot of knives coming out. Thanks, guys.